Thank you. Inform your friends, class is on. They should join us. Just a minute, I'm setting the yes. I can I can hear you. Please uh, don't don't end the meeting on your end. Thank you. So I've seen the Amoni Banga Brenda Matere Kevin Mandela is the Amoni Banga Brenda Matere Kevin Mandela is the Amoni Banga Brenda Stephen Berry, uh, Sylvia, Madika, and Adira Marini. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, merci beaucoup pour le joint de cette session. Aujourd'hui, on va continuer avec notre notre discussion sur le passé composé. Comme vous voyez, j'ai un Ici, aujourd'hui, je vais essayer d'écrire quelque chose. Euh, et j'espère que nous aurons un cours vraiment bien, bien animé. Ok. Donc, euh, d'abord, euh, laissez-moi vous partager mon, euh, mon webcam. Comme ça, vous allez voir ce que je vais faire. Je vous demande de faire attention. Comme ça, euh, j'espère que vous allez saisir de ce que je vais, je vais enseigner aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, j'espère que vous pouvez voir euh, mon tableau ici. Donc, euh, le cours aujourd'hui, c'est français. La grâce est le 22 juin, elle est 2020, comme j'ai déjà bien écrit. Donc, bienvenue pour le cours d'aujourd'hui. Euh, pour ceux qui sont ici pour la première fois, euh, bienvenue. On a commencé quelque part pour le cours. On avait et bien, bien enregistré donc, euh, sur le, 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 le portail ou bien le, 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 le plafond du site. Bien à saisir le cours. Et j'espère que vous pouvez m'entendre. Car il y a bien. Donc, voilà, c'est bien du pour la team. C'est M. Kantiani. Okay.
So as I've said, I'm sharing this board with you. So we have a uh, formation passé composé, a tense we use to express events or action in the past, and they are complete. So we have two ways of forming passé composé. Forming passé composé with the verb avoir, or forming passé composé with the verb to be. So, so far, we are using the verb to have to form the past tense. So conjugation of the verb to have in the present is uh, as uh, I've shown. So we say, je, tu y as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, il, elles ont. So that is how the verb to have is conjugated in the present. Allow me to wrap this so that uh, now, remember I've said, the past tense, as we say, passé composé, involve the verb to have or the verb to be in the present plus the past participle. Now, the past participle form of the verb, le participle passé, le participle, participle passé. Le participle passé of the verb varies depending on the classification of the verb. Whether that verb takes the verb to be or the verb to have, it all depends on one. How, what is, what is the group of that verb? So here we, we go. So first group verbs, le premier group, premier group, pardon, ER verbs, or we say, premier group. So premier group, these are verbs ending in ER. For example, take the verb voyager. All first group verbs are verbs ending in ER, except the verb aller, of course, which behave the same when it comes to the formation of the past participle. So please, I want you to follow. So voyager is to travel. So the past participle of this verb, you replace the ER with E accent aigu. So the past participle, bien le participle passé, pour le verb voyager, c'est ça. Voyager avec O accent aigu, which I believe you can see. Voyager, in other words, all verbs in the first group, all verbs in the first group, the, the verb in the infinitive form and the verb which has formed the past participle or the past participle form of that verb in its initial form, which we call the infinitive form, the verb is pronounced the same. So I believe that is very, very clear. So note that voyager is also read as voyager. But now, when it comes to formation of the passé composé, when it comes to formation of passé composé, if you have a question, please use the public chat. Peter, if you have a question, use the public chat and the rest. So, so we have the first participle, which is voyager. The verb is voyager. The past participle, Cecilia, I'm clear? The past participle is that, now I want to express myself in the past. So I will simply say, year, Hier, virgule, je, je, voyage à Paris. Hier, 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 je voyage à Paris. Je voyage, je voyage. You see, when talk about the formation of the passé composé, we have got uh, the tense. Uh, we have uh, that the verb to have uh, as had conjugated the verb to have plus the past participle. So indeed, formation of passive composé is avoir, avoir, okay, plus participle passé. So this avoir is conjugated in the, in the present. Any question? Any question? Mandela, any questions? Tu Malinda. Oui, bienvenue. Aujourd'hui vous êtes là. Mute yourself or you can speak. Cecilia, any question? We can proceed, eh? Brian. Maina Brian, any question? Silence means everyone is okay. Linda Stuma, you can mute yourself. Oh. 
Okay, so uh, uh, let me proceed. I believe uh, you can hear me and you are following what I'm doing. So any first group verb, any first group verb, the first participle, uh, the way I've illustrated, and I believe that is clear. Now, for example, we have the verb eme. The verb eme, and you want to use this verb to express yourself in the past, so we say, je aime, je aime, je aime mon père. Je aime mon père. I loved my father. You can also say, les touristes, les touristes, the subject, uh, the, the noun is plural. So we conjugate the verb to have in the third person plural, les touristes on, on, for example, we say, on mange, on mange au restaurant. Les touristes, why have I, have I conjugated the verb to have in the third person plural? Because the subject is in plural form. Stephen, Mary, mute yourself kindly. Merci. Les touristes ont mangé au restaurant. Les touristes ont mangé. Ça, c'est passé composé. Avoir au présent place de past participle. Le participe passé, of course, the verb manger to eat. Any question? Mary Steven, can you unmute yourself? Unmute yourself. You have a question? Chair was saying, pardon, please. I pardon where? Mm. From. From, come up again. From there, Jay amends my pair. Okay. But you've understood the formation, how, how we form the, the, the past tense, passé composé, yeah. with yeah. avoir. Now, yeah. you see, you see, we have got the verb aimé here. I'm using the subject from je. Je, remember, we said, when we are conjugating the auxiliary verb, je, with the verb to have is je, I have, je. Then the past participle of the verb aimé, we replace the ER with O accent aigu. So I simply say, je aime mon père. Understood? Yes. Just a minute. Just a minute. You can see what you I've written. You can see what I've written. Can, can Mary, can you confirm? Yes. So uh, let us proceed. Huh? So okay, uh, thank you. I, I, I was I was I was explaining the formation. So so basically, that's how first group verb form their past, their past participle. Once you know, one one thing I really want you to understand is that past composer will always involve two verbs, either the verb to have in the present or the past participle form of the verb. Okay. okay. So in this case, we are dealing about we are dealing with past composer with the verb avoir. 
Uh, Situma Linda, you can't hear me. Masi London, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, if uh, uh, j'aime, okay. Now, j'aime, j'aime. You see, uh, I'm only what you've written is correct, but remember, the verb aime, the E af after M must have an accent. The way you've written it, it is wrong. I want to know that. Anytime you talk about ER verb, that verb must have, the verb eme must have that con accent. You see this? Let me, it must have, you cannot say this. This is wrong. The verb must have that acute accent. This, at all times. When you're talking about passe composé, remember, when we have that, j'aime mon père. J'aime mon père. J'aime mon père. This statement is in the present. The statement I've written here is in the present. So this sentence into passé composé is what I've is what I've, is what I've written there. Okay. So please please note that. Kelvin Mandela can you mute yourself. Huh? So je je aime je aime, but j'aime j'aime mon père is the present. J'aime mon père. I love. I love my father. J M A. I loved. Amoni, I believe I'm clear there. So, uh, Linda Stuma, I, I, I think uh, you are the one who has a problem because the rest can hear me. So just check your audio. Kindly check your audio, uh, audio setting, so that you make sure you you can hear me. I don't know. I don't know what you are using. Whether a laptop or a phone, I really don't know. But you should be hearing me because the rest can hear me. So I believe we can make progress on the same yes. kindly. <laughs> can someone tell Kelvin Mandela to mute himself? I keep on. Uh... Now. Second group verbs. Second group verbs are verbs ending in ER. So I said to form the past participle, you replace the ER with E. Example of this verb is, for example, the verb choisir. The verb choisir. So the verb choisir, the past participle is simply choisir. So we want to use this verb to form passé composé. So we simply say, je choisi je choisi je choisi zitek je choisi zitek i chose zitek or you simply say nous avons nous avons choisi nous avons choisi de voyager Nous avons choisi de voyager à Nairobi. We chose to travel to Nairobi. Nous avons choisi. Je choisi, I chose. Nous avons choisi. We, we chose. Now, when you say, for example, let's use Mandela. Mandela, Mandela a choisi. Pardon. Mandela a, a choisi. Mandela a choisi. Mandela chose. You see, I've conjugated the verb to have in the third person. Je, tria, il a, el a, il a. Il has been replaced with what? Mandela. Il. So the verb to have il a, he, Mandela. Mandela a choisi de rester, de rester à la maison. Mandela chose to stay at home. Ashwazi. Any question as far as second group verbs are concerned? Any question? Oh. 
Okay. Now, we have, we have the third group verbs. Third group verbs, which is very important for you to, to understand, okay? Third group verbs. And just a moment. I hope my two webcams are not uh, confusing you. So we have, we have now uh, third group verbs. Third group, I want you to follow because I'll be rubbing. So make sure you take notes. Eh? Make sure you take notes on, on, on the same. So third group verbs, we have, we have the verb avoir, which is uh, falling under third group. The part part of the verb avoir is you, you, had. The verb être, to be, the past participle, participle, sorry, the past participle is ete. I want you to note these things down because I'm going to write because of space. Now, we have some verbs behaving the same, like the verb prendre. We have the verb, the verb prendre to take, which is, the past participle is pre. So these verbs behave the same way, apprendre, Apprendre, comprendre. So the past participle of apprendre is pre. The past participle of apprendre is apri. The past participle of comprendre is is compri. Note that. So prendre is prendre is to take. So we say pre. We say com, we say compri understood. We say a free learned. A is to learn, comprend is to understand. So compre is the past participle. A free is the past participle of the verb apprend. Then pre is to took. So I believe you can use those verbs because all of them take the verb to have. So in this case, they also take the verb to the verb to have to form the past, the, the, the passé, passé composé. Okay? Just uh... so, please tell me or start a sentence using the following. Construct a sentence in the past tense using the following the verb of one. The verb être, the verb prendre, the verb comprendre, and the verb apprendre. Form a sentence using the following, and uh, I want you to send that under private chat. You know how to do that? You click my name, you click my name, especially the one with the computer, the one I'm using where you are seeing the camera, the, the board, eh? where you're seeing the board. So use that, form a sentence, construct a sentence using those five words in the past tense, subject, pronoun, or the noun of your choice. Okay? I hope I'm clear. So please uh, do that. You have five minutes.
The words are here. I told you to write them down kindly. We have the verb of word, the verb pair, the verb from, the verb compound, the verb from, kindly. The question is, construct a sentence of your choice in the past tense, per se composé. That's the question. Okay? Avoir, I gave you the past. We have the verb avoir, the verb être, the verb prendre, the verb comprendre, the verb apprendre. I'd given you the past participle. So my question is construct a sentence using the following verbs expressing yourself in the past. Passe composé. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to each and every one of you, depending on what you send, what you send me. Eh? Peter, I've responded to yours where the problem is. Please take note of that. The rest, I'm waiting. Maina Brian, Masi London, Cecilia. Cecilian, I've seen yours. I'd explain myself. You construct a sentence in the past, past tense using the verb I'd written on the whiteboard, kindly.
Amoni Lubanga, Cecilia, Masilandan, Brian, Mwarage, Tunge Sharon, Duncan, Okongo Judith, Akeo Achieng, Peter, you've responded, Wana. Sylvia, Wenika, Stephen, Mary, Waidira, uh, Wairimu, Kevin, Mandela. I'm waiting for your phrases or sentences based on what I've said. Remember I've said you send me, you send me your sentence under the private chat, kindly. That is not passé composé. Gumi Duncan, that is not passé composé. Revisit uh, what I'd explained. My explanation, how do you form passé composé? First, how do you form passé composé? You must understand that. Lillian, I've not talked about that. I've not talked about that. I didn't give you an open question. I gave you specific verbs that you are supposed to use to form past tense. How do you form past tense? First, you must understand what it entails when it comes to formation of passé composé. The verb avoir, for now, we are using the verb avoir to form the past passé composé. So I gave you, I gave you the verbs you are supposed to use. So those verbs, first you form, you have to know how they form their past participle, then you use the verb to have in the present as you form those sentences of your choice. Please understand my explanation. We are under formation of passé composé with the verb to have. I've given you the verbs with their past participle. So remember I've said, formation of past tense involves the verb to, to have in this case, plus the past participle. And what they're about to have is conjugated in the present. Okay. Muteti Mwende, the rest, we are learning, we are learning here, kindly.
Mumanyi. Mary Stephen. Now, you people, it seems you didn't get my, my question. I didn't give you an open floor. Brenda uh, Oteri, I didn't give you an open floor. I gave you the following verbs. You are not getting me. I gave you these verbs. I gave you the following verbs. If you are not taking notes, it will be a big challenge for you because I've given you the past participles. So I've given you the following verbs to use them to construct a sentence in the past. We have the verb avoir. Number two, the verb et. Number three, the verb apprend. Number four, the verb crown. Number five, the verb compron. Compron. Form, construct a sentence of your choice using the following verbs. That was the question, Lillian. That was the question. I'd given you the past participle of this verb, so it's upon you to know. How does this verb form their past participle and then you construct a sentence in the past? Kindly. Make sure you take notes. Gumi Duncan, that is not correct. You've changed the verb. You're using the verb prone, but what you are you've written has nothing to do with that verb. Odiambo, no. No? No. Maina, Maina Brian, what's the past participle of the Baba Pron? What's the past participle of the Baba Pron? When the, this, are the, well, this is what I wrote on the board when, before I gave you this uh, work to do. These are what are avoir, et, apprend, prond, comprend. Brian, what's the past participle of the verb? Muteti Mwende, very good. But you remove la. You remove la. Je prie. Le monde, correct. 
je, je mange that one I never gave. Je compris français. Okay? Je compris français. So that is correct. So, Muteti uh, Mwende, you can uh, help uh, Lilian. To see what I've written. She's saying that she's not seeing. J'ai appris hier. Correct. I learned yesterday. That is very correct. Mutete Mwende, you are doing great. The rest. Please mark, make sure, mark, mark. I mark the register by participation. Eh? I mark the register by participation. So if you are in a class, please make an attempt. We learn by making mistakes. So I expect everyone to write something kindly. J'ai compris le français. Now, Please make sure you take notes. Make sure you take notes when I'm writing. I started by talking about how third group verbs form their past participle. Kindly. How third group verbs form their past participle. That is where whether Elizabeth, uh, that one has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Please, please follow. Some of, I, I'm sure. I'm sure you are in class and you are taking notes <laughs> kindly. So I started by giving you how, telling you how first group verbs form their past participle. Then I went to second group verbs. Now I'm in the third group verbs. So third group verbs are irregular verbs. I'm going to give. I told you last time that third group verbs they form their past participle in irregular, irregular manner. So there is no clear cut how. What you can say, like all first third group verbs form their past participle the same way. No, unlike first group verbs and third, second group verbs, third group verbs they are even irregular when it comes to the formation of the past participle. Please take note of that. So we have got the verb avoir. Lilian, I hope you can see what I'm writing. The past participle of the verb avoir is you. EU. We have got the verb act. The verb to be. The first participle of that verb is ete. Ete. Then, those are the auxiliary verbs. Then, we have got the following verbs behaving the same way. The verb prondre, prondre to take. The verb comprendre to understand. We have the verb apprendre to to learn. So this verb, the first participle is pre. The verb comprend, the first participle is compri. The verb apprend, the first participle is apri. I hope that is clear. For example, you can say, nu, nu, Nous avons appris. Nous avons appris. We learned. Nous avons appris. We can say, j'ai pris, j'ai pris un taxi. I took a taxi. J'ai pris un taxi. Nous avons appris. J'ai pris un taxi pour aller à la maison. J'ai pris mon petit déjeuner. ETC. That is that. We have, I'm rubbing the board. We have these verbs. The verb avoir et être. So you, so we can, you can say, j'ai J'ai eu un accident. I had an accident. The verb avoir, to have. I have, so I had. I, I am in Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. Ete. I have an exam. J'ai eu un examen. 
j'ai eu un examen. Un examen. J'ai eu. J'ai un examen maintenant. I have an exam now. In the past, j'ai eu. I had. J'ai eu un accident. I had an accident. But I'm now fine. J'ai eu quelqu'un. I had someone. Okay? The verb to, to have, you can also use that verb in the past. The verb to be, you can also use that verb in the past. For example, we say, nous, nous, nous avons été. We were. Nous avons été. We were. Nous avons été à Nairobi. Just, nous sommes à Nairobi. Present. Nous sommes à Nairobi. We are in Nairobi. Nous avons été. Nous avons été. We were in Nairobi. So, all the verbs, whether auxiliary verbs, whether first group verbs, whether second group verbs, whether third group verbs, those verbs you can use them as well to express yourself in the past. Remember, we are talking about le passé composé. Any question? Multiple group verbs. Remember, say third group verbs are third group verbs are irregular verbs. J'ai eu un ami français, Brian, that is uh, brilliant. J'ai pris mon stylo, brilliant. J'ai appris à Zipek, correct. Just a minute. J'ai été, okay, Brian, that is correct, but you know, you've forgotten the accent on the, the accent on the, on the letter A, okay? So make sure you learn how to how to put that accent. Eh? You know, when you change your keyboard in French, it is very easy for you eh, to if at all you're using the you're using the how do you call it? You're using the the phone, it is easy to just change your, your whatever in French, the keyboard. You change it in French in French, sorry. If you're using the if you're using the computer, you, you can insert there is that option or uh, but I know if you change your ear in the setting in the French language, it will be, it will be, it, it may be a challenge for you to 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 know how it was because the, the, the keyboard will change to, 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 to the French keyboard. So please just learn how to how you can
I believe uh, now I should be very, very clear. Confirm you can hear me now. Yes. Okay. So uh, I believe I believe that is clear. Please make sure you take notes. Merci. So uh, more third group verbs. More third group verbs. Huh? More third group verbs. So we have the verb, uh, the verb respond, to respond. We have the verb attend, to wait. We have the verb paired, double T, attend. Then we have the verb pair. Paired to lose. We have the verb entendre to, to hear. We have the verb defend, defend to defend. Now, the following verbs, if at all, I'm, I'm trying to just uh, use the document I sent you when you are doing first group verbs. Remember that doc too, I'm sure you have it. You will just follow those verbs the way they are classified. They, form, they, they, they behave the same when it comes to the formation over there, the past participle. So the verb respond, the RE, this verb, they behave the same way. The RE changes to you. And Brian, I think that is where, that's where you, you got lost. So. Unlike the verb apprend and the derivatives, don't confuse them with the verbs I've just talked about. The verb prond, the verb comprend, and the verb apprend, and also the verb surprend. We say pre, compre, surpre, apri. Here, the R it changes to you. So the verb respond, the past participle of the verb respond is répondu. Okay? Répondu. I hope, I believe you can see. Répondu. Then we have, attendre, we say, attendu. Perdre, we say, perdu. Entendre, we say, entendu. Défendre, we say, Defondi, respond to respond, attend to wait, pair to lose, you can lose someone, you can lose something. Entendre to hear, defend to defend. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the past participle of this verb. So, forming or expressing yourself in the past, it's very simple. You use the following, the past participle plus, of course, remember the past participle precede what? The auxiliary verb to, to have. At this point, we are forming the past participle, passé composé, using the, the verb to have, avoir, plus the past participle. So, répondu, responded, attendu, waited, perdu, lost, entendu, had, okay? Then, défendu, defended. Okay? Kelvin Mandela. So, uh, allow me to wrap. Can I wrap? Are we together up to that point? Can you hear me? Cecilia, can you hear me? Confirm kindly.
Good. So uh, let me wrap the board. So uh, let me just construct a sentence using using uh, uh, one verb, the verb pair to lose. So for example, I can say, j'ai perdu, j'ai perdu, j'ai perdu Lilian, j'ai perdu Lilian comme une amie. J'ai perdu Lilian comme une amie. Lilian, can you unmute yourself and translate what I've written? 30 seconds, kindly. Lilian Mwende. Not in class. Brian? Yes. What, what's the meaning of that? What I've written? I believe you can see, eh? It's not clear. Is it okay there? Just read for me. Uh, you can see, you need this, uh, uh, the lunette. Eh? Je perdu, uh, let, let me rewrite it. Eh? Sorry, I've just decided to be innovative. Just understand me. A minute, I'm sharing it. I don't know, someone has disactivated my... Disactivated my... J'ai perdu Lilian comme une amie. What does that mean? I lost Lilian with my friend. Comme um, means us. Oh, I lost Lillian as my friend. Yeah, I lost Lillian as my friend. So we say, nous ne sommes plus des amis. Nous ne sommes plus nous ne sommes plus d'amis. We are no longer, we are no longer friends, okay? This is the present. Nous ne sommes plus. We are no longer. Ne plus. No longer. We are no longer. Nous sommes. We are. Nous ne sommes plus. La négation. We are no longer. We are no longer friends. So you can lose someone in terms of friendship is as ended, or you can lose something. For example, you say, J'ai perdu. J'ai perdu. J'ai perdu mon téléphone. I lost my. I lost my. I lost my phone. J'ai perdu uh, mon père. I lost my father. Ameaga, metwacha. Things like that. So know how you can express yourself either in the present or in the or in the past. Okay. J'ai perdu. Tu as perdu. Il a perdu. Elle a perdu. Nous avons perdu. Vous avez perdu. Ils, elles ont perdu. That is the verb. So the verb. These verbs are given. You remember the R E changes to letter. Let I use the verb perdu is perdu. The verb entendre is entendu, had. The verb uh, répondre, répondu. J'ai répondu au téléphone. I answered or I responded or I replied to the call. J'ai répondu à votre email. I responded to your email. So basically, that is how those verbs form their past participle. Without much ado, I will proceed to the next group of verbs. So we have the following verb. The verb fair, fair to do, fair, F-A-I-R-E. The verb fair to do, so the past participle is fe, F-A-E-T, fe. That's the past participle of that verb. The verb fair, fe. 
the verb dir this to say the first participle is d said okay the verb the verb agree to write the first participle is agree wrote the verb lear lear to read the first participle is lu read l u lu the verb vouloir the verb vouloir the verb vouloir it is okay there you can see the verb vouloir the first participle is voulu wanted the verb vouloir voulu wanted vouloir to want voulu wanted we have the verb we have the verb for example the verb uh, to voir, to be able to so the past participle is q the verb le voir to rain le voir the verb le voir to rain the past participle is plus rain parfait dire de écrire écrire Lire, lu, vouloir, voulu, pouvoir, pu. We have pleuvoir, plu. Now, we also have, we also have other, take a third group verb, sorry, other third group verbs ending in IR, just like the second group verb. So, what happens with these verbs? So uh, allow me to clean the board again. I believe you've written them. So we have, we have uh, uh, the verb, for example, the verb dormir. Dormir is to sleep. Dormir is to sleep. This verb behave the same as the first group verb. So we say, dormi, dormi, slept. The verb servir, to serve, the past participle is servi, served. We have the verb, we have the verb sortir, to go out, the past participle is so T. We have the verb partir to leave. The past participle is party. Okay. Please note these verbs: dormir, dormir, servir, servi, sorti, sorti, party, party. Now. Not those verbs. They behave like the second group verbs when it comes to the formation of the past, formation of the past participle. I'm talking about the formation of the past participle, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to clean the board. Again, I give you more, more past participle of the verbs. Now we have the verb venir, which is unique. Note that all verbs ending with enir, enir, enir. The verb venir, the verb tenir, the verb devenir, okay? The verb souvenir, okay? The verb revenir, okay? But, but not, not, not sentir. Sontir. Sontir. The verb sontir behave like the previous verb had given you. So the first part of the verb sontir, kindly let me omit it. I will I will come back to it. So the verb venir, ir, 
So this one, the past participle, the if changes to you. So we say venu, venu, okay? We have this, the past participle is tenu. Any verb ending with near, near. There is the N before the IR, okay? Devenir, the past participle is devenu. Souvenir, the past participle is souvenu. Revenir, the past participle is re revenu. So please take note of that. I'm waiting for whether the verb takes the verb to be or the verb to have when it comes to the formation of the past participle. Okay? That is that. Take note of what I've said. Are we done? Brian, are we done? Am I dead there, Redemptor? Are we done? Have you taken those down? Only Jacqueline. Okay. So we have, uh, I'm talking about the verb, uh, pardon, Asa. the verb, the verb, sentir. Sentir is to feel. Sentir, S E N T I R. The past participle is the same as the verb part T, so we say sonti. Felt. 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 Sonti to feel felt. So that is how various verbs form their past participle. There are so many verbs falling under the third group. So please, I invite you also to go an extra mile, look for those verbs. Especially the third group verbs. There's no problem with the first group verb and second group verb. The problem is the third group verb. So please do more research just to help you master the past participle of the past participle of the third group verbs. Now we have the verb connect. The verb connect is to know, to know someone or to know something. The past participle of this verb is connu. Connu. For example, you can say je connu. J'ai connu, j'ai connu Redemptor, j'ai connu Redemptor Azitek. J'ai connu, connect, I've said is to know, to know someone, to know something. So in the past, when so you say, j'ai connu Redemptor, I knew Redemptor. I don't know where you knew each other, depending on the person you know. J'ai connu Redemptor Azitek, okay? J'ai connu Redemptor Azitek. So, on the same, you can say, you can say, Paul a connu, Paul a connu, Paul a connu sa fiancée, Paul a connu sa fiancée en 2012-2012. Paul a connu sa fiancée en 2012. A connu. Néo. Ok? 
We can use that verb again, the verb connect. We can also use it, for example, nous avons, nous avons connu, nous avons connu, nous avons connu, monsieur, monsieur Dixon, comme un homme très sérieux. Très sérieux. Très sérieux. Nous avons connu Monsieur Dixon uh, comme un homme très sérieux. Nous avons connu. You will do the side about the meaning. Nous avons connu Monsieur Dixon comme un homme très, très sérieux. Passé, composé. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? We have the verb. We have the verb savoir. Which is also which also means to know. I'd explained this earlier on. Remember, when you are doing these verbs in the present, the past participle is su. Savoir is to know, connect is to know, but savoir is to know how to do something. How to do something. Okay. Having the knowledge on how to do something, but the verb connects to know someone or to know something. Knowing how to do something. Like for example, I want to say, I know where he stays. You the verb savoir, you have the knowledge, you have the information. But you can say, I know Dixon, I know his name. I know his name, I know him. Connect. I know him, I know his name. I know how to prepare Ugali. I know how to prepare Ugali. I know where Nairobi is located. I know Nairobi. I know someone who can speak French. I know where he stays. I hope I'm clear there. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? Any question? Any question? Okay. Now, uh, huh. I want to call a name here. Timote Cecilia, kindly unmute yourself. The rest you, you chat, you, you can chat us, public chat. Tell tell us what you've learned in summary. Everyone, tell us what you've learned in a summary very fast. Those who have joined with listening only. Abdi Afid. What you learn there in the public chat? Everyone should be writing kindly. Cecilia Kimote, can you uh, can you unmute yourself? Cecilia is not in class. Udiambo Peter. There are people who I want to hear their voices here. Those who join with the mic. Unmute yeah. yourself. Yes, Odiambo Peter, tell us what you've learned from where we started. Just a brief of what you've learned kindly. <clears throat> I've learned about the past participle of various verbs of the uh -huh. second groups and the third groups. Mm -hmm. 
I've also learned various types of third group verbs and their past participles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. That's all. I've also learned the various types of verbs that have the same meaning but different different type of uh, of how to put them in a sentence. Yes. Uh, that's all. Yes, so the most important thing is uh, that you have to know how verbs form their past participle across the, across across different groups, okay? So that you yeah. to note. So we talk about first verb, how they form their first participle, you replace the E-R with letter, letter E with acute accent. Then second group verbs, you drop the I-R, you replace that I. So like the verb fini, the first part is fini, okay? Then yeah. now the the most important thing is to study the third group verbs. And I invite all of you to take your time. How various third group verbs are Remember, you will not form, talk about the passé composé with just the time you talk about passé composé. The first thing that should come in your mind is that the verb, either the verb to have or the verb to be in the present, then plus the past participle of the verb, you want to use to express your yourself. Remember the verb to be and the verb to have. The auxiliary verbs are just helping you to express yourself in the past. But the verb expressing the action, ladies and gentlemen, the verb expressing the action is the verb you are given. For example, you want to have it already taken place. So we say, je mange. I ate, je mange. We say, we say for example, Mary Stephen a mangé du gâteau. Mary Stephen a mangé du, du gâteau, okay? Mary Stephen ate cake. So we say, for example, they are free to cook, okay? That's the third group verb. So the verb, second group verb, for example, the verb that you say to succeed, we can say, ah, nous avons de français, we succeeded, we made it. French verb. So it's very, very easy for you when you know the, the, how verbs are classified and the verb you are given, does it fall under first group? Does it fall under second group? Does it fall under third group? And if once you've, you've noted that, how do you now express yourself the correct form with the form of the verb depending on whether that verb takes the verb to be? I believe Monsieur is clear on that. Okay? For those who are writing to continue writing. Yes, verbs ending Judith uh, uh, Okongo, uh, the verbs ending in near, the near, the I are changes to you, any verb ending in near. In fact, I'm, I'm trying to make this thing easy for you. You see any verb ending, there is the then I change the letter U. And please don't confuse the verb, uh, the verb ending in RE. Like, for example, the verb comprendre and the verb entendre. Comprendre is combatant, is entendu. They are the verbs, we, talk, we call them the derivatives of the verb to take. Prendre, pre. But now you see, répondre is not a it is not répondu, it is, a, it is not répondu pre. So we say répondu, the R it changes to letter U. So please take note of the verb comprendre, the verb apprendre, the verb, I've said the verb comprendre, the verb surprendre, the verb apprendre, and the verb prendre. Those four, please note 
so that you don't confuse them with the verb compromise. So I was saying that uh, don't confuse those two categories of verbs. So the verbs ending in like the verb, these verbs, they don't behave the same way. So the verb comprendre, the verb apprendre, the verb surprendre, the verb apprendre, the four, they behave the same way. Now, unlike the verb, Répondre, répondu, répondre, entendu. Ok, we have the verb perdre, perdu. We have the verb défendre, défendu. So please, please take note, take note of those, those verbs. Any question? I've given you the past participle. Majority of the verb from the past participle from the past composé with the verb to have but we have verbs which form their passive composé with the verb to be so at this point with these minutes kindly i'm giving you a break of 15 minutes so at exactly 4.05 right Four or five, we are assuming, and now we are going to wrap up this by the verbs composé or past tense with the verb to be. Those get because you might get lost. So please let me at let's meet at four or five. Four or five, it's African time. You have uh, now 14 minutes break huh? because it's now 3:51. So let us uh, let us let us meet at that time, okay? Let us meet at that time so that I tell you now what will help you to whether the Thank you and I hope you are learning.
Have what for to have in the present tense to say I have done something or we have done something to refresh our memory on the conjugation for avoir in the present tense. J'ai is I have. Tu as is you have. Il a he has. Elle a she has. On a one has. Nous avons, we have, vous avez, you have, ils ont, they have, for masculine or and elles ont, for feminine, of you. Great. So now we have conjugated our helping verb avoir. The next thing we'll look at is the formation of our past participle for regular verbs. So the past participle is like the word eaten. I have eaten. Let's take a look at the verb manger, to eat. Manger is a regular ER verb. And for regular ER verbs, what we do is we take off the ER ending and we add E accent aigu. So we get Manger, eaten. Now, now, for finir, which is an IR verb, we do a very similar thing. We take off the IR ending. So if we wanted to say, I have, have finished, we would say fini. And this fini means finished. And now for our RE verbs, we have attendre, which means to wait. So attendre is an RE verb. And we're going to do a very similar thing. We'll take off the RE ending. We'll add a U. So we'll say attendu. Waited. Just say, I have waited, j'ai attendu. Okay, so let's put both parts together for the passé composé. I have these three sentences, and I'd like you to help me finish them. So the first sentence right here, I'd like to say, I have danced, or I danced. In English, we have two ways of saying the past, and in French, we just have, I have danced. It means both, I have danced and I danced. So we already have our here, j'ai, I have, and here's our ER verb, danser. So go ahead and take a second and think, what would you put in that blank to say, I have danced, j'ai. We're going to take out the ER ending and add e, accent aigu, to get j'ai dansé, I have danced. This second one here, I want to say we have chosen or we chose. Again, we have two ways of saying it in, in English and only one in French. We can only say we have chosen, but it means both we have chosen and we chose. So we already have nous avons, we have. Our 
helping her and what we would do is take off the IR ending and add an I for nous avons choisi. We have chosen or we chose. And then this last one, I'd like to say she has responded. She has responded. It also would mean in English, she responded. But again, in French, we only have this one way of describing an event in the past that happens um, not over a long period of time. So not she was responding, but she has responded. Um, so what would, would we put in this blank? Ella, she have our verb répondre. So how would you turn répondre into the past simple? Instead of to respond, responded. What would you put in that blank? We'll take off the RE ending and replace it with the U. L A R E as before she responded. Now, what if we say what has not happened? Where will we put our ne and our pa for negation? First, it's important to note that with avoir, every single conjugation begins with a vowel. So instead of ne, we'll use our n apostrophe. Normally it's ne, but that turns into an n apostrophe when the next word starts with a vowel. So let's take a look at how to say that I have not eaten. Je n'ai pas mangé. Je n'ai pas mangé. So you'll see here that the ne pas so around the helping verb, the auxiliary verb avoir, that's the verb that's conjugated in the present tense. And let's look at the second example. Vous n'avez pas dormi. You have not slept. You have not slept. So the ne and the round voir, and then the rest of the order of the sentence stays the same. So vous n'avez pas dormi. You have not slept. Okay, so let's practice putting sentences into the negative that take place in the past. Let's start with this one. Instead of saying, I danced, I want to say, I have not danced. So what would you put in that blank? We have je, I. How would we say have not? Je n'ai pas. I have not danced. Dansé. Je n'ai pas dansé. How about the next one? Instead of saying we have chosen, we want to say okay, we have not chosen. What would you put in that blank? We have nous, we, and we would put n'avons pas. We have not chosen. Choisi. Nous n'avons pas choisi. And then finally, instead of saying she has responded, we want to say she has not responded. So we have elle, she, and what we did not has not, but na, pa. Elle na, pa. She has not répondu. Responded. Elle na, pa. Répondu. So hopefully to Today's video has helped you to understand how to use the passé composé with avoir in the affirmative as well as the negative. As always, if you have any questions at all, please let me know.
Okay. So, so this is Sunday. This is Sunday. Uh, sorry. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can hear me, and I believe uh, the video I shared you learned something. Kindly confirm uh, whatever you whatever you understood, or if anyone is able to speak, just unmute yourself and tell us briefly in thirty seconds what you heard from that video. Kindly, anyone. Any volunteer? Sharon Dunge. Maina Brian, just unmute yourself kindly. Yes. Uh, did you follow the, the video? Yes. Did you hear anything? Yes. What did you hear? Uh, it was basically teaching about Pase Composio, the different uh, verbs. Uh, and how they are conjugated in the past tense and using a voix in Pase Composé. And then it also taught the negation part of it where, where how, how you can negate sentences in the past tense using where the negation nu comes before the verb and then pa after the verb. But yes, nu is now, supposed to be immediately uh -huh. after the nini, the subject. But but not 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 this. Eh? I, I mm. was doing some summary using different verbs. Yes, but it, it is just the same thing I'd explained. Eh? Sorry. Uh -huh. My uh, my camera has uh, just a minute. Yes, you must see this. Because the, the one for the phone, it is upside down, right? The phone, it is upside down, right? Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, Kindly don't 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 uh, interfere with my webcam. Huh? Whoever join as a moderator and uh,
No más. ¿Vale? Okay, I, I don't know whether, let me try to change, but uh, let me try to change the, I use the, the back camera of the phone, because I really want you to understand this. So, use the back. Uh, uh, I believe you can hear me. I don't know whether it will be possible for you to, to see the board. So, uh, can you mute yourself? So, so basically, this is what uh, what was being explained there. So, we have got the negation. The negation here. What I want you to understand in terms of negation using nepa, nepa, this nepa surrounds the verb avoir. So in this case, in this sentence, you can see here je, you see je ne pas voyager. I did not, like you say, I have not traveled. To me, I didn't, I didn't travel. Remember the explanation was, you are told, you know, in French, you use, you use one. Huh? So it can mean I have traveled or I travel either. Okay, so please take note of that. So what you need to understand in terms of negation, you the, whatever you are negating in French, in per second possessory, in this case is the verb to the verb to have. The past participle is always isolated. Like, like when you say, say Paul I don't say Paul for a friend like this, Paul I don't say. Paul danced. So you negate this, Paul, you see this, Paul Napa. Paul Napa, don't say. So basically, basically, this is what, what is happening as far as the negation is concerned. So that is what, what is explained in, that is what is explained in the, uh, in the video I shared with you, okay? So please note that we've been told regular to do verse, second to verse, and then we have got the third group that group verbs which are which are irregular and uh, i think that one summarizes uh, what uh, we were talking about uh, as far as the passé composé formation is concerned any question swali amadede ami brenda watere kevin mandela brian maina muteti mwende Peter, Diambo, okay, Achien, Judith, Sarah Mwenzi. Any question? Steven, Mary? Yes, I have a question. 
is there is there any case that ne can be used without pa or pa can be used without ne uh pa can be used without ne but ne cannot be uh, but yeah it is possible you can use you cannot use ne without pa but pa you can use without ne for example when you say pa the question no question pa moi not me you see pa moi not me pa 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 steven pa steven pa steven not steven so it is it is we call it partial negation when you use pa without ne we call it partial negation but you need pa ne pa is the action the total action like you cannot say pa manger you cannot say not eating no you say i am not eating i don't know that you're getting my point so you cannot say pa manger you have to say je ne je je ne mange pas you cannot say pa manger uh ah -uh. je ne mange pas i am not eating you are negating the entire action remember we are negating the action but here for example someone ask you es que tu manges du poulet are you eating are you eating are you eating chicken so of course you are eating something but this person knows that you are eating but not doesn't know the exact thing you are eating the mistake is on what you are eating so in this case you say pas de poulet je mange je mange je mange du riz not not, not chicken i'm eating rice i hope uh, the rest you are getting that concept tu parles avec Dixon. Ah, avec Dixon. Je parle Brian. Not with Dixon. I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to Brian. The pa can be used without ne, and we use it in, uh, when it comes to the partial word. Partial negation, negating part of the sentence, not negating the entire action. Remember, action is expressed by the verb. The verb the verb and the verb alone mary steven i hope i've answered your question yes sir yes, you any other oui. question no i've answered you yes when when so so when when it comes to that so, so i've said pa is a is negating the, the, the entire action okay so you cannot use pa uh, you cannot use uh, uh, you cannot use uh, pa without uh, name term in some in some in some instances okay my network my network very fine Uh, any other question so uh now i want to just introduce uh, uh i want to introduce a formation of passé composé with the verb et in the next few minutes uh may so so then we just uh, wind up uh with uh next time so but i just want to introduce it kindly So, uh, formation of passé composé avec être. So, you write that. Formation of passé composé uh, avec, 
avec être. Formation au passé composé avec avec x. I just want to introduce it very fast. First, remember you conjugate the verb. Okay, guys, man, that's I believe you can hear me still. So we talk about uh, formation du passé composé avec F. Okay? So in this case, you have to know how to conjugate the verb to be in the present. So we say, we say, I hope you've written that. Brian, confirm you can hear me or anyone? Yes, I can hear. Thank you. Please allow me to stand so that I hear. So I will be, allow me to be a bit innovative here. So you can see the border. You can see the board very well. Huh? So first, you must know how to conjugate the verb X, okay? The verb X, so we say, Je suis bien, il, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils, elles sont. This is how you conjugate the verb to be plus the past participle of the verb. Now, I want you to understand this. Eh? I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how will you know whether the verb takes the verb to be or the verb to, to have? That's the most important thing I really want you to understand. How will you know that? It is simple. Now, we have the following verb. Please note what I've conjugated, what I've, how I've conjugated the verb to be. Je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, on est, nous sommes, vous êtes, il, elle, sont. Now, once you conjugate this verb, now, I'm going to clear my board. Remember, we have conjugated the verb to be. Now, the verbs which take the verb to be. So, please note this. Kindly note what I'm saying. I'm going to dictate this. I'm not going to write it. Please, kindly. So write what I'm saying. Generally, majority of the verb form their first passé composé. Generally, majority of the verbs form their passé composé. Generally, majority of the verb form their passé composé. Majority of the verb form their passé composé with the verb avoir. With the verb Avoir. With the verb, avoir. That one we talked about, right? But note, there are special group of verbs. There are special group of verbs. There are special group of verbs which take 
the verb to be in the present plus their first participle. Or we come per se compose with the verb ek. There are special group of verbs which form their passé composé with which form passé composé with the verb with the verb et. I've said there are special group of verbs which form their passé composé with the verb et. They are the verbs. The verbs of motion, the verbs of motion and pronominal verbs. Pronominal verbs. They are the verbs of motion and pronominal verbs. So please take note. Remember when we started this topic, this, this semester, we started with the pronominal verbs. And I told you we will uh, revisit that. So you can see again they are featuring here. So verbs of motion, I'm going to give you those verbs of motion. Pronominal verbs, you already know them. What are the pronominal verbs? Remember, I said, sorry, the pronominal verbs are verbs which are accompanied what? by a pronoun. Okay? They are verbs accompanied by a pronoun. But now, what are the verbs of motion? So that is what I want to note down. I want to note them down. Then uh, we just call it an evening. Unless you have a question. I'll say that. Verbs, we have got pronominal verbs and verbs of motion. There are 14 verbs. You must know them. They are, they are 14 verbs. They are 14 verbs. So the following verbs, the verb, we have the verb arrive. Arrive, I believe you can see, eh? Kindly confirm. Brian, can you see? Yes, it's clear. Yes, arrive to arrive. We have the verb partir, partir to leave, partir, partir to leave. We have the verb sortir. To go out, and we talk about so motion. So arrive, partir, sortir. We have the verb to be, to fall. We have the verb monte, to climb or to go up. We have the verb descend, to descend or to go down. Okay. We have the verb venir to come. We have the verb revenir, revenir to come back. We have the verb entre to enter. Okay. We have the verb. I've said arrive, partir, sortir, tomber, monter, descendre, venir, revenir, entrer. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf. We have how many to go? Five. Okay? Five verbs. Passé. Passé. We have the verb rester. Those are 11. Three to go. Brian, any other verb you may think of? Allez. Net. 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 I, I will come to that verb. Very good. I will come to that. We have allez to go. Wow. Okay. We have how many to go? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, onze, douze. Two to go. I've said arriver, partir, sortir, tomber, monter, descendre, venir, revenir, 
on se rentre. Okay. Rentre, you, you came, you came, you went back. Okay. Now you are coming back. Rentre, on se is to enter. So you entered, you went out, and then you are entering again. The literal expansion of that verb. One verb to go. Those are 13. Retourner, I'm done. You merci. Retourner. Retourner. Ladies and gentlemen, know these verbs. These verbs form their past tense with what? The verb to be. Of course, formation of the past participle, I will not talk about that because we had, had explained how verbs form their past participle. ER verbs form their past participle by replacing the ER with O accent aigu. The verbs ending with near and explain how they form their past participle. Okay? That's the most important thing. This one, the R, it changes the letter, letter U. So formation, about, formation of the past participle, that's something which is behind us. So please master these verbs so that you don't uh, find yourself in a limbo where you don't know where this verb takes the verb to be or the verb to, the verb to have. So that is very, very important for you to know. Phenomenal verbs, I will not go back to that. We will do that just when comes now then express, expressing ourselves in, the, ourselves in the past. So these are the verbs. Please note them. Note them down kindly. Once you are done, you let me know kindly. Are we done? Okay, so uh, allow me to wrap this kindly. So we, I've, I've, I've told you, kindly take your time, master these verbs. Please note what I'm saying. I'm dictating some notes, kindly note this. When it comes to the formation of a second pose, when it comes to the formation of a second pose, sorry, when it comes to the formation of a second pose with the verb 
Ekram, começou a fazer com você o elevado Ekram. O Ekram começou a fazer com você o elevado Ekram. O Ekram começou a fazer com você o elevado Ekram. The past participle. The past participle. The past participle. The past participle. The past participle must agree with the subject. The past participle must agree with the subject. The past participle must agree with the subject in terms of gender and the number in terms of gender and the number in terms of gender and the number full stop if the gender if the gender of the subject is if the gender of the subject is feminine if the gender of the subject the noun if the gender of the noun is if the gender of the noun is feminine we add e we add letter e to the first participle we add letter E to the past participle. I've said if the gender of the noun is, if the gender of the noun is feminine, we add letter E to what? To the past participle. If the noun, which is the subject, is, is, feminine plural is feminine plural we add es to the past participle if the gender of the subject is masculine plural we add es to the past participle i hope you got that if if the subject is masculine plural if the subject's masculine plural, for example, we say Brian and Dixon went to went to Nairobi. Brian and Dixon, they masculine group. If I've said if the gender of the noun is masculine plural, we simply add we add letter S to the past participle. We add letter S. Okay. We add S. We add S. We add letter S to the past participle i hope i hope i'm understood there kindly as i wind up so for example i want to just use the verb ale and that will mark the end of our lesson we will continue from that end so the verb ale so we say je suis je suis je suis Zale. This is the past participle. You see Zale. So I will put that E in the bracket depending on the person speaking. If, for example, uh, Mary Stephen is the one speaking. So Mary Stephen will not withdraw will in the bracket. So Mary Stephen will say, You see that? Ale. So this E is just showing us that the person speaking here is Mary, Mary Stephen. I hope you are getting my explanation here. The E here, that E is added to show that the subject here is feminine. And please note, this one only happens with the formation of a second pose with the verb what? The verb to be. Because here, this past participle behave like a, an adjective. So this adjective describes the word, the subject. So it must agree with the subject. So that is what I'm trying to explain, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you are getting me. So je suis allé. For me, I'm the one speaking. So I will simply say, je suis allé. I went to Nairobi. Je suis allé à Nairobi. Je suis allé à Nairobi. Because the verb allé takes the verb 
to be is one of the vows of motion. So, je suis allé en Nairobi. So, I believe you understand why I'm putting that in, in bracket, kindly. But when you are speaking, don't put in bracket. I'm just using the bracket to explain myself what I, what I told you earlier, what you've written. So, let me restart. So, we say, je suis, je suis allé. I'm putting that in bracket. Tu, we say tu y es. So we say tu es allé. I will still put that in bracket, depending on the person I'm addressing. Come on in, Sharon, I will say tu es allé, e plus this e because I'm referring to a lady. If it is Brian, I will say tu es, tu es, tu es, tu es allé. Now, il, now here I'm going to separate them. Il est because il is masculine, il est talé, il est talé, but l, not l. I'm not putting this in bracket here because l is feminine. Okay, so l est talé, who? Jackie, l est talé, who is Jackie? Where is Jacqueline? Ah, l est talé chez, chez ses parents. She went to her parents' place. l est talé à l'école, she went to school. Elle est allée en ville. She went to town. Elle est allée à l'hôtel Saroba Stanley. She went to Saroba Stanley Hotel. So I hope you are getting me. So basically, that's what you need to understand when it comes to the formation of a second pose with the verbs of motion and pronominal verbs. The subject, the, the past participle, the past participle must, I say it must, agree with the subject. Therefore, no. Nous sommes, remember what I said, plural, you add E, S. So here, I will write the past participle, Ale. I will put one E in bracket, but S is, S is common. Why S is common? Because uh, 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 if this nu, we, are only ladies, then I will go away with the bracket. So I will say something like this. Nous sommes, nous sommes, Ale, pardon. Nous sommes, Ale, this. And that is why I'm putting this in bracket, awaiting for the gender. But remember, I told you, if you know the gender is determined, you know the person you are addressing, you know you are the person speaking, you know the, the people you are referring to, then in now communication, you don't put this in bracket. But remember, in spoken French, when you are speaking, with or without E, with or without E, there's no change at all there's no change at all in terms of pronunciation but now in the writing in the writing you must you must show you must show that the first participle is indeed respecting the the gender of the noun so please i really want you to take that into consideration when it comes to this kindly i've said that the first participle must agree with the gender but you're saying the same thing when i'm the one being says you see the layer and i will be remember Cecilia will still say the same thing. Je suis allé à Nairobi. So that is very, very important for you, for you to note kindly. So vous êtes, vous êtes, I believe you can still see my board. Uh, vous êtes allé. So if we use the verb vous addressing, we use the subject pronoun vous addressing one person, it reaches there. But now let's assume we use the plural. Again, we say vous êtes allé. E in bracket, but S is common. Finally, il. Il son tale. That is like that, but L. El son, el son tale. Kindly see what I've written here. Compare this and this. What is the difference between that and that? This is the third person. So, il est tale. So, this was il, he. But il son tale, I've added letter S to, to this. El son tale, I've added letter S to, to this. So, basically, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you have to know. That is how you deal with now the verbs, the verbs of motion at this point when it comes to expressing yourself in the past, what we call le passé composé. If you have a question, kindly ask me as I end 
this class. Kindly. Any question, please ask me. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes. Why sir. did you include net and we say je suis ne? Yes, there's a reason why I've not included that, and I told you that is the point I want to make. So, but the, my 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 explanation here, you understood, right? Yes. Now, apart from the verbs of motion, apart from the verbs, apart from the verbs of motion, kindly, we have got other four verbs, other other three verbs. Sorry, other three verbs. Now, making those verbs seventeen, okay? Making those verbs seventeen, and these three verbs are the following. We have the verb net, the verb net to be born, to be born. So the first participle is ne. Okay. We have the verb devenir, devenir. The first participle is devenu, devenu, became, to become, to be born, to become. Then we have the verb mourir, to die, to be dead. So we say, the past participle is more. So, ladies and gentlemen, apart from the, the, the 14 verbs I gave you, verbs of motion, add these three, making them 17. Those verbs form, form the past passé composé with et. Please note that. Okay? Yes. So, we say, Je suis né, I was born. Je suis devenu professor. I became a professor. I don't know what you want to become in your line. Maybe some of you want to become a manager. Je suis devenu, je suis devenu un expert en français. Okay? Je suis devenu, je suis devenu un professeur. Je suis devenu un père. I became a father. Je suis devenu le professeur de français. I became a French professor. Je suis, not je, je suis. So, ne, je suis ne, je suis devenu, je suis mort. Again, just like the same way, ladies and gentlemen, I've explained, I've explained, and I will continue explaining, I've explained that with the vow to be, the past participle must always agree with the gender. So, just like the way we did, so if it is a lady speaking with we'll a letter, letter E, a man, nothing. If it is plural, you add E, S to feminine. So it's just the same way I've explained the verb alay. So thank you so much, Brian, for reminding me of reminding me of that. I was to bring it on. So apart from these are not verbs of motion. I want you to understand that these are not verbs of motion, but there are also the special verbs which make part of the verbs. Apart from the verbs of motion and pronominal verbs, we have these three verbs forming their passé composé with the verb to be. Thank you so much. Any question? Any question, kindly? If you have a question you ask, I'm winding up. It is, uh, I've, I've, I've taken 11 minutes extra. So please, uh, uh, I want you to anything you want to you want to ask. Ask you can mute yourself. You can unmute yourself. Anything you want to. So because the class ends there, okay, the class ends there. So please, if you feel like asking, uh, comme je vous dis, uh, je vous souhaite très bon 